Hello everybody, welcome to Synchronize. My name is James Chen and I am chilling here with Mr. Olaf Redland. How you doing? I'm doing alright, doing alright. Got a little bit different setup today, because reasons. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are you, James? Uh, you know, <laughs> at all the... I mean, uh, all the events that I've been going to recently, everyone's always been like, Hey, James, how you doing? And my answer is always really shitty right now. But, you know. <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, I could be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but, I mean, you got to do stuff. Yeah, for sure. Because you, you were busy this whole weekend, right? Yeah, I was doing the Arc Revo stuff, which was a lot of fun. That was that was good times there. It's always... Because, I mean, one of the easiest things that about it was I was commentating alongside... You know, Tasty Steve, Say Jam, and Ringe, and everyone Dude, kept the saying the memes. The memes about you having gloves to protect you from Steve is just <laughs> the greatest fucking thing. <laughs> there was one when the announcements were starting. I like looked at Steve and I leaned my arm over and I was like, "I'm ready." <laughs> I was like, "I'm ready." <coughs> oh man! But uh, I mean, that's, honestly, that's that good. that's what made it really great. Because a lot of people were saying that it seemed really smooth. The production was like, my God, you guys just like didn't fight for any time. You guys weren't talking over each other or whatever. And I was and we were like, it really helps that the four of us are like legit, actually friends, <laughs> you know, and it just makes it easier because we're all used to each other's rhythms and beats and stuff. Yeah, so. no, I mean, commentating with strangers is tough. Yeah, it's way yes. tougher. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, adjusting, adjustment periods and stuff like that. But it was good times. It was good times. Had a good time uh, doing that commentary. So, and a lot of cool stuff out there. Looks like a, you may have a character that might get you interested in DNF Duel come summer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've been interested. It's just that's some game I never got around to. Right. But right. good lord, taking one look at that character, I'm like. Yeah, <laughs> Spectre, yeah. I mean, if you're going to draw in people for the new season, you might as well do it with the waifu, dude. Yeah, dude, hit the ground running. But I mean, honestly, you're gonna be like, oh, we're going to have a really cool, like, sword character that covers screen and bullshit and has Spencer's zipline for no reason. Like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I totally didn't make that connection, but you're right. It is Spencer's zipline, dude. <laughs> we're going to um, give Virgil Spencer's zipline. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, oh. And you know what? She'll probably be like mid tier because that game oh, yeah. is so busted anyway. Yeah. But oh man! But I mean, there's a lot. Obviously, a lot of fighting game stuff that's happening uh, uh, right now. Just a lot of new news, especially with all these world tours coming to a close and stuff. So, you know, um, unfortunately. On the other hand, that's a great segue. Yeah. <laughs> Because SNK is running their uh, KOF 15 Japan Cup right now. That right. league. Right. Okay. So which, what's the uh, details about that? Do we have like any tweets or posts or do you just have mostly the information which, Go to um, their main Twitter, which I can totally bring up right SNK's now. SNK's main Twitter, you mean? Yeah. Okay, SNKP yeah. Global or SNKP Official. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I see. Uh, 18 hours ago, they put out this tweet. Here's a short digest of week yeah. one. Yeah, which has like highlights from some of the matches throughout the day, and then the next tweet after that is the current results of the league. Oh dang! Okay, okay, okay. Let's see here. Do you want to just watch this on, like right now on street? How long is you this league? Yeah. Oh, How I mean, it's only like two, uh, like a minute and a half or less. Oh, you're right. It's only two minutes. Yeah, let's just watch yeah. this, dude. Let's actually just watch this. So this is a uh, Japan League Week One. Oh no, this is the actual stream. Whoops, that's not what they. Yeah, I uh, they yeah, just, just 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 a little Twitter video. Oh, just watch the Twitter video. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, let's just do that here. Poof. Yeah. All right. So let's go over here, like so. Hey, check this out. Oh yo, technology. Yeah, I know, right? I'll try not to make this too loud so we can talk over it a little bit here. But week one, I've already watched some of this video, and I'm like, ooh. Well, actually, before we watch this video, let's talk about what this is, what what the what the league is, right? So, uh, there's the week one results. Uh, where do they have the information uh, on? I believe uh, it's in a previous tweet from like a few days ago when it actually started, because okay. I don't know all the details completely, completely. I mean, I just look at it, and I'm like, oh, it's a league event. That's awesome. Right. 
right, let me see here. Let's see if I can find the yeah, original. <laughs> we're supporting this, we're supporting this. Yeah, supporting... I know, right? Yeah. Hard to I find mean, their event. It's good, though, because uh, it's nice to see them tweeting out about a bunch of all these different events. And a lot of birthdays, too. So, oh, yeah. Uh... By the way, happy birthday, Terry. Oh, ha. <laughs> Terry Bogarts. Oh, man, I should have cooked some hot dogs today, so... In celebration. Could have been a real hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, KOF XV dash JP League. Uh, sorry, JP dash League dot com is Let's the official website. Say for that it. again. KOF XV dash mm-hmm. JP mm-hmm. dash League dot com. Okay. Is it in English or are we? Okay. Oh, probably not. Nope. But I will use the Google Translate, and we will see how it goes. There you go. So there we go. So an official online league with 16 top domestic players of KOF 15. As a qualifying league, a round-robin online match will be held with four people in each of the four groups. After that, the winner will be decided in the final tournament held by the top two people from each group, a total of eight people. Don't miss the hot battle of KOF 15, which has reached season two. So there you go. Don't miss the hot battle. <laughs> so tomorrow is actually going to be week two and then week three over here. I, I like how well, they translated 23. Actually, not tomorrow. Right, like tonight. Oh, yeah, you're right. Be- you're right. But I love how um, Google Translate decided to translate 23 into literally typing out It does that sometimes. Um, so, yeah, 8 p.m., Japan Standard Time, or okay, so that means 7 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. Yeah, is when it starts okay. because uh, Frelissimo is running the English restream. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. And here, if you actually look right here, these are the groups over here with uh, Mock, Shionen, Tatsuya. It's, it's, it's just all killers. Like obviously, mm-hmm. like you know, you're getting the top 16 players. Oh my god. <laughs> M Dash, Katsuji, Morimoti, Gosio. Lagi, Lagia, Kindebu, Koji, Akira. So this must be the Japanese region over here. And then Abao, uh, K2, Popo, and Kibetsu. Actually, I'm not even yeah. sure if these are in like that kind of region or not. No, uh, they're in groupings, but I don't know if it's like, yeah, the Osaka, yeah. the Tokyo, mm-hmm. and then like Hokkaido or something like that. I don't know but, if there's I mean, anything is this like that. On, this is, is this only Japan, basically? I or believe this... it's only Japan. Oh, okay. This okay. is this is the Japan League. Because Abao, is he from Japan? I thought Abao was from uh, another... Japan. Oh, he is. Okay, okay. Oh, you know what? I'm getting him confused with uh, with the Street Fighter player VX Bao. That's why. Okay, okay, okay. That would do it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, and then you know, uh, our our one of our favorites K two is uh, definitely kicking him some asses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Right here, he he's the cosplayer dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Who will you know again? Like at Evo Las Vegas, what night nineteen? Whatever year it was. Yeah. He was the Ukyo playing Ukyo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oops, hang on a second. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, he's got that really cool high earn. Yeah. So if you so, look at this yeah. right now, there's so the results he's, right here. He's super strong, and then you know actually does like the cosplays and stuff, and it's just it's it's a great show no matter how he performs. <laughs> <laughs> He was the one that played. Uh, did he play Corey at Evo Japan? Or was that someone else? No, that was, that was somebody someone else. else. That was that was someone else. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, uh, but so he week was, one he is was the, on the, the like the the pre-release live stream. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. 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 But yeah, so week one is done, as you can see from the results yeah. down here. They actually have the results uh, currently here, as you can mm-hmm. see. So let's go ahead and watch this little highlight video uh, now and see what. Uh, See what we some of the nonsense in this video. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, here we go. Do a kind of spice. Active hitboxes. Chasing down dashes too. Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Like that confirm. Uh, Oh God, Iori. Yeah, you're you're dead. You're dead. Let's yeah, that's just, that's the end of that. Face it. Yeah. Actually, oh, okay. He just he didn't even go into any of the supers. Use the resources. Yeah, I know. He barely needed it. Oh, I was about to say, let's go, Clark, and then I was like, this is not a Clark highlight. 
It didn't matter how much health Clark has, it was not a Clark highlight. Yeah, as soon as I saw that uh, armor, I was like, yeah. As soon as I saw oh, the EXDP, I, I was like, this is not a Clark highlight. Uh-uh. Uh, that's the end of that. Uh -oh. Good presence of mind on that one. Yeah, Koji, of course, dinosaur. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, dang, the interrupt. the challenge. Dude, they are not letting Kyo get away with stuff anymore, dude. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I like how they nerf Cronin, but then, like, it's clearly he's still one of the best characters right now. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, at least he's not nerfed from top one to top one. Yeah. He's just, like, mm -hmm. somewhere in the top five. Oh, God, is this... A oh, no! No, if we got a real match, that's what we've got. Yeah, I know. I thought we were gonna get just, like, destruction, but Luang? Is this a Luang comeback video? Oh, oh no! Dude, Auto no, that was actually ridiculous. Go back. Go back. Go back. You need to see how ridiculous that was. That was the autocorrect DP, but make sure he's doing it the correct direction, right? Yeah, because KOA 15 does not have autocorrect. Right. Uh, so he so literally he had the, did the DP backwards. Yeah, so he read this, did the DP input backwards so the DP so would come sick. out the other way. That's actually ridiculous. I mean, that is some uh, awareness right there. He's like, no, King Dabu, I know you're going to cross me up. Too bad. And then Chizuru doing Chizuru things. Yeah, you got touched. Uh-oh. Man, I just, I just really noticed something about this, though. Is that this kill color here? Is like, is like, it's, it, it, it almost made me think he was Kenso, and then I got really sad. <laughs> No, poor Isla. You're losing all of your health, to Yuri. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Oh, but oh, that's. Sick. I like the instant overhead. And now you're done. Uh, 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 uh. Oh no, she has no more meter. Can't she kill off of this? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> They're landing on the fireball. Yeah. Yeah. That combo's fun, dude. That combo's fun. But yeah, so again, that was like totally worth watching. There's some of the nonsense, some of the like <laughs> presence of mind. Yeah. Because so I mean, that's the thing, like KOF, like in a lot of ways, is still a very like fundamental traditional 2D fighter kind of thing. Oh, yeah. But sometimes shit is so nonsense, you have to have like Marvel level <laughs> presence of mind. To, like, you know, like when you see Magneto's confirm off of the most stray of hits. Right. <laughs> like KOF kind of does that level of awareness yeah so i mean if you look at this record over here right now let me see oh god the zooming in is not doing anything okay um Sion and oh, yeah, Tatsuya won their match so obviously they play two matches they've got to play three matches total uh for that pool and that's why they're gonna have week one week two and week three so they all play one person every day it sounds like and then uh the tournament finals on the 25th so if you look at the record right now, uh, Sionin and Tatsuya won their matches. Uh, and then M Dash and Katsuji won their matches here. Uh, Lagia and a Akira won, or Akira won their matches over here. And then Abao and K2 winning their matches. So, uh, yeah, they are Which all... Which means that also this, this all is going to wrap up just before EVO Japan, I think. Oh, interesting. You're right. It is. It is. That would be, like, the point of this. Nice. Okay. And then, of course, EVO Japan will be happening, and there will be a lot more fun KOF 15 action going on uh, <laughs> there. So I don't know how many foreign players are traveling to uh, EVO Japan for that. I mean, I know, I know. There's still like a fair amount of players who are going to Evo Japan, but going to Evo Japan or KOF 15, right? Because, like, for example, like, I mean, at, at the Arc Revo World Tour, that was the first time we really had any regional clashes in Guilty Gear, and so, uh, like, real Japan, you know, versus America stuff going on, and so, you know. Uh, there were everyone's kind of hype for Evo Japan because now all the U.S. players are trying to go to Evo Japan and try to, you know, dust themselves off. Yeah, basically dust themselves <laughs> off here. And so uh, I'm curious to see what kind of uh, situation there's going on with uh, KOF 15. If there's any sort of like uh, uh, 
Uh, let me see. Overview. I'm sure a good chunk of like the top like uh, North American players will be there or at least be able to make an attempt for it. Right. But then, but like, you know, we're talking like the top 8 to 12 in North America, maybe. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine mm -hmm. too much more than that as far as North America goes. Oh, dude. Okay, that's cool. So let's see. I mean, oh, shit, if I was going, I probably wouldn't even be, I'd barely play. Shao Hai is going to be there. Shao Hai is going to be at Evo Japan. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. Kizzy K is going to be there. Violent Kane is going to be there. Um, Kane Blue River will be there. Uh, Hellsap is going to be playing there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just looking at... Mono, Mono <laughs> is going to be playing there. Killer Kai is going to be playing in there as well. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So, I already see a bunch of names, uh, good names here. Rama Sama is going to be playing it. Gamer B is going to be playing. Punko, Ranma uh, is going to be there. Frianel is going to be there. Nice. Okay. Okay. Which um, actually, this is a good good time to remind um, that we are going to miss up to three shows in April. Oh, really? Well, I mean, also, I'm not going to be home for next week either. Okay. So, so but I'm you're you're be, going next week? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to travel next week because that's when uh, PAX East is. Mm. So PAX so East starts on the 23rd, so I'll be traveling on the 22nd. Okay. Looks, so. Um, so then, yeah, so April, we're probably going to miss three shows, but I actually looked at the uh, time conversion. Uh-huh. We might be able to do one of them uh, live from Japan. <laughs> and, you know what be the and you know what the best thing about it is, too? If you do it live from Japan, your internet in the hotel or on the Wi-Fi device that you guys are carrying will probably be better than the internet at Kitty's place right now. Because <laughs> uh, internet at a... Internet at a I mean, I, you remember what I told you I did in Japan, right? With, uh, with the... Uh, with the hotel internet, I was like at one of those little Appa hotels, tiny little box, and Tetris 99 just came out. I downloaded Tetris 99 through the Wi-Fi on my Switch, and then with my phone, live streamed with the Wi-Fi, me, like I had the phone literally like hanging on something so I could hold the Switch under it, and I was able to stream from there so it's not necessarily shade on anybody's wi-fi but more just that the wi-fi in japan is ridiculous it can be both, it can be both. <laughs> fair um but yeah so no we did the i did the math on it and apparently in japan uh our show starts at 10 a.m thursday oh okay which is okay. like totally reasonable like yeah. so like one of the days we might be able to do live um and then one of the other days, we might just have, like, footage to send to you, at least via, like, a oh, Google Drive. Because right, there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to be doing and, like, right. probably do, like, a Twitter live stream or some kind of crap. Because there's Twitter definitely going to be some yeah. IRL stuff that we want to share. Yeah, if you guys have any, like, IRL stuff that I can just, like, toss on there, that would be actually yeah, be yeah. super cool, super cool. But, I mean, one of the cool things about this, I mean, looking at this... I filtered it out to just the KOF entrance, and there's 800 attendees on this in this tournament, dude. There's 800 people going at it at this tournament, so this will yeah. probably be the largest tournament for KOF 15 ever at this point, right? How many were at Evo? I thought Evo broke a thousand. Did he? Oh, actually, you're right. But I mean, to be fair, this will be the one that has all the Chinese players in there too. So you know. Um, I just want to see how many people yeah. were at. And I mean, it's also, again, worth noting that uh, competing in Evo Japan is free. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the people entering over here might also not even show up because that's what happens with free tournaments. So. Yeah, but I mean, also, like, SMK is giving away swag for all you have to do is prove that you entered the tournament. That's right. Oh, all and then, uh... Yeah, all the yeah, swag twist, that I want. Because I want that poster so yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. A thousand and nine entrants at Evo for King of Fighters 15. You're right. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, but yeah. So uh, while while we're gonna be in Japan in April, one of the things we get to do 
is we're going to um, swing by Zen Market and oh. talk to them more in person. And oh. so that'll be kind of cool to keep sharing some of that stuff. Uh, real quick, um, thank you for the sub, GF Trexler. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, plus, also, we're going to be in Osaka for a majority of it. So we're definitely going to do, like, an SNK history tour. We're going to hit the overpass <laughs> and everything. Yeah, nice, nice, yeah. nice. And shout-outs for Seiryu for the continued subscription. Much appreciated. Oh, my God. Nate, what the hell noise was that that you just made on the microphone, Nathan? Did you hear that? That was just, like, it almost sounded like a I car. Couldn't... No, I couldn't hear him over the car that's actually outside revving its engine. Oh, maybe that was your side then. I thought that was Nathan making the noise. Okay, never mind. It's It was actually the car. Okay. Uh, but I think this is a perfect time to segue because speaking of, you know, our sponsors, affiliates, friends, etc. Um, hey, thank we you, Jojo. actually We uh, swung by Spec Fiction this week. Oh, nice. Okay. And I uh, got to spend some time uh, talking to the owner there, talking about some of the statues that are coming, some of the statues that have come out, uh, and uh, yeah, statues that are coming. Oh man, we we got to we got to talk about it. We, yeah, we got to talk. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like, I mean, I. <laughs> Did they know how much everybody wants this? <laughs> they didn't. So that's the fun part. Like hanging out and talking with the owner. He was surprised. Oh, really? He's All like, right. honestly, I don't really know that much about this character. And suddenly it's like up. We're like, what the heck's going on? And I had to basically tell him, like, not only is this a character that's popular in KOF, but he's popular among Street Fighter players. Yeah. Uh, like, just like me. CVS2 made made us fall in love with Yamazaki because he's yeah. just such a cool character. And now so. he's got a coat. <laughs> and now he's got this sick ass coat. Bro, though, this this fucking statue. So he's one fourth scale, so he's about two feet tall. Jesus. And thank you, Garvey's Ghost, for the sub as well. But dude, look at this thing, dude. He's beautiful. And one thing they don't tell you deliberately, or like not clearly in the description for this, and uh -huh. it's something you have to pick out, is that he has two head sculpts. Yeah, they actually have the other one over here, but you can barely see it. Yep. So Kitty did some extra digging, and that's in the other pictures we'll show later. That she oh. actually got a better shot of the one with the tongue. <laughs> I feel like they added those pictures to this uh, to this uh, gallery mm. over here. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But uh, yeah, look at this dude. Thing. So look by the way, I opened thing. up the KOF 97 stage. Uh -huh. Oh my God. His base is so good. So what is this thing that he's standing on over here? So it is like basically a hovering platform from a stage in 97. And oh. like everything that's there is in 97. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. The, the the lever, the, all this stuff over here. Lever? What lever? Well, whatever this thing here. Oh, that's, that's the knife. knife. Oh, my that's God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I just realized that now. Okay. Because that yeah. knife is gigantic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Yama bar. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dude, he's so amazing. Dude, this is, yeah. And there's the other head right there, but a not very clear picture of it. Yeah, check him out, dude. He is, he yeah. is all. And like the, des out. the description even has like all these things about like comes with an extra plate for like the nameplate and like certificate of authenticity. Um, so, so fun thing about the thing on the ground there. Yeah, I thought it was a normal blood stain too, but I started looking at it more. It's actually the flame swirl from the 97 logo. And it actually oh, matches the stage in 97. Wait, let me see. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I might have you just bring up the 97 stage. Well, the 97 logo right. Oh, right there. There's that flame swirl right there. And yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. It does match it. Whoa. How did you even catch that? Because I'm a huge nerd. Okay, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> So the yeah, fire but, swirl like, just happens to be on the platform then already, right? Mm -hmm. Which, again, I'm going to have you bring up the 97 stage. I'll actually I'll look it up real quick while you look at the other photos, and then I'll show okay. you. I'll link it to well, you. Do you want It'll me to easier. bust out the, the photos that Kitty took over here? Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, see, these are the same photos that they have. On yeah, they are the same site. ones now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder if they just took it from. They were like, "Oh, thanks, Kitty," and then they just threw it up there. <laughs> but yeah, Yamazaki oh. is. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, I would try to get this thing, but man, this thing is, yeah. It's he's a little pricey. He's a little yeah. pricey. But... but I mean, again, this is this is figure collecting, right? Like, if you come mm -hmm. into this stream and are surprised by how much any of these figures cost, you are definitely tuning in one of the first times ever here. So. <laughs> yeah, Cause... I mean, and it's one of those things, like, he's one of those ones that it depends on what you're willing to justify, is there are some other figures that aren't even this expensive, and I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna pass. And then I yeah. see this guy, I'm like, Fuck. well, let's just put it this way: I already know that Nyato's probably bought three of these, maybe. You know. <laughs> so as far as I know, she hasn't actually bought one yet because uh, a two foot tall statue is fucking obnoxiously large. Oh yeah, well, fair, fair, yeah. That's, and that's basically what it comes down to. But yeah, even she, she's like kind of shaken, like. Bro, because he's he's remarkable. He's a wonderful piece. I'm really excited for him. Like I feel uh, like we need to set up a GoFundMe for Nyato now just to get her one of these because, like, seriously, I mean, like, we could probably actually, you know, write it as a health issue, right? Because if she doesn't obtain this, you know, I I might I don't be damaging know. to her mental health. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just a GoFundMe for Nyato to own this thing to to you know, it's like one of those companion dogs, you know that. You have to take on the airplane with you and emotional stuff like support that. Critter. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There you go. It's an emotional support figure, right? Yeah. And then I'm sure she'll try to create some cat ears and you know <laughs> stick it on there. So. Yeah, and that's one thing too is because I have I have the one fourth scale Mary. I'm really looking forward to putting them next to each other. Mm. Oh man. Uh, oh yeah. So I sent you the the image on. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, Torrance. You have nowhere to put it, but you had to buy it. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. That's the way mm -hmm. it works. That's the way it works. Oh man. Yeah. So I'm gonna be. And the thing is, so one of the things is, is that I can't find anything else from this statue um, creator, like the company, the production company, or anything like that. So I'm wondering if this is their first statue. That's a pretty dang good one if it is. Now, the the picture that you sent me, that is as big as it gets, so it's very pixelated here as yeah. I zoom in on it. But yeah, you can clearly see that's that's what he's standing on because you can see that's the F standing in. on, and then you got the little hovering platform crap in the background. Because yeah, you can see And the you've got the weird like LED disco ball thing in the center of the stage. Right. Cause I, I did notice that on the on the quote blood stain on the floor, which is the Thing. Yeah, so you can see the blade right there. So that's the F right there yeah. from the. From mm -hmm. the you can actually right see there. the F like transposed yeah, in. Yeah. Also, Seriu, yeah. with any luck, yes, he will be taller than Mary. I with mean, any luck, he be, will be. Right? They're supposed to be for one fourth scale. Right. If they're both one fourth, then it's supposed to be the. Yeah. But yeah, like you see, like the green spiky orb thing, like a almost like an aquatic mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you look yeah, in the yeah. back, and it's got like the disco lights in the stage. Let me see. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Oh, this that thing thing's... back there. Yeah. yeah. Dang. And then this yeah. is, of course, like the thing. So they just basically took all the elements from this stage and threw it together onto Into this. One base. Basically, yeah. like this. Yeah, it's even got the TV monitors there. Oh, I didn't even realize mm -hmm. that. Yeah, the TV monitors are actually all there, and they just threw all the elements of the stage on there. Wow. So well cool. done, dude. Well done. So, yeah, and again, there's only 175 of this statue. Jesus, okay. That, okay. that is a really low print run, which I think reinforces my idea that it might be their first statue, like they're testing the waters, but fuck, they are hitting the ground running. Yeah. <laughs> you no know, problem. Torrance apparently used our synchronized code at Spec Fiction. You mm -hmm. know what? I'm gonna have to send this link. I don't know if uh, Flexus has seen this yet either, because uh, she has definitely learned to love some Yamazaki as well. So send this to her, and she'll be like, "Why, James? I have no money." <laughs> yeah. Um, now this 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 statue caused a little bit of a revolution, both for like the fans right now, because we're all like, "Oh my god, I need this." Uh -huh. But again, talking to the owner of Spec Fiction and just seeing like 
how many pre-orders he got in just like a day and a half. Right. And that's the thing. If only 175 of these are being made, Spec Fiction is probably only getting like what, like five total or, you know, or something like that. Right. Uh, they received more than five pre-orders, so they had to get a few more than that. Oh, really? Oh, dang. Okay, okay. So they yeah, have... no, this one, this one actually like blew up. Well, so because that's the thing is, I'm surprised. Like, I would have expected they just would only let most shops only get one or or, or a few. You know what I mean? So, 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 um, not trying to divulge too much information, but uh, they actually had a little bit of leeway between opening pre-orders and then choosing how many orders they were, or how many orders they were getting of the nice. figure total. Okay. And okay. so he had basically that day to create a buffer of, Oh God, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't oversell already. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Again, man, look at the, I mean, that's the thing, right? You only make a few of these things. They cost a lot of money, but, there are people out there who will buy them. All these other game companies have just got to get on the ball, man. Like, that's the thing. Because, I mean, one of the things is that SMK does have the advantage of the their license being contracted out through uh, Funniverse, mm -hmm. which means that it's less that they have to worry about. And then there's more people who can just talk to Funniverse, be like, hey, I want to make Yamazaki. Right. Cool. And it uh, probably simplifies things immensely. Yeah, it's probably true. Because then also, like, I mean, this way I don't have to pay for the 97 license. I just pay for the license to Yamazaki in 97. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. probably simplifies things for the statue companies. Right. Okay. okay. So, but meanwhile, you know, if you want the Street Fighter license, you kind of have to get it all inclusive now. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But even still, man, like if you did that, I mean, it's like, where are all of our cool coasters? <laughs> Japan. Yeah, exactly. They're all. Dude, like... I actually just found out like K or, uh, Street Fighter did some really cool stuff for their 35th anniversary in Japan. Oh, really? OK, OK. Dude, oh, there's some the way... really cool, like classic acrylic stands of like old art. And stuff like that. Yeah. Also, uh, I should, I for, I don't think I mentioned it to you, but I did actually at Capcom Cup get a whole stack of the stickers. So I have like the entire sticker stack over there. But you know what? I haven't talked about these in, in the last few weeks. Uh, but uh, we got these from Zen Market. You got these for me as well, right? So you got me these cool pins over here. These are some more Zen Market. Ancient enamel pins. Yeah, some Zen Market purchases over here. There you go. Uh, let me see if I can get the focus. Yeah. To, there you I go. I mean, oh, beautiful. Yeah, like you, you all know I talk about some of these things that are like older than some of my friends. And I managed to get James some of that stuff too yeah, for Street so Fighter. there's that one. And then this thing is adorable over here. If you can see this over here, look at that little chubby. Oh yeah, the pocket shine. Yeah, I think it's adorable over well, here. So lurker's fine. I mean, we're on our way because at least Papa Parade has the chun and cami, so we might get there eventually. There you go. Chibi cami, but yeah. So Olaf got these for me, so appreciate that. Uh, through the Zen Market stuff, so he just ran into these. It was like, "You want these?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I've, yeah. I've, I've, and again, you know, thanks to our friends at Zen Market for everything that we have with them. Yeah, exactly. And so Love yeah, those, yeah, you know, if you guys ever want to buy anything from Japan, use Zen Market again. So it's always a it's always a nice thing to have. Uh, and again, I say it every time, if you are looking for something and you're having trouble finding it on Zen Market, don't hesitate to shoot me a DM. I'll help you out. I guess I've become a fucking wizard at searching that thing. <laughs> oh, man. I've been, I've been actually managing to scoop up a few things I thought I'd had to just kind of, like, accept I was never getting because they were, like, blind boxes from one pop-up ever. And I just managed to stumble upon someone selling. Well, like, oh my god, bye, 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 bye. I mean, I still can't believe you got that S and K rune thing, right? Like, <laughs> oh you know, yeah, the rune charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely taking it with me to Japan so I can bring it home. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> You've come full circle, rune. Uh -huh. <laughs> the world traveling keychain. Take of it to where Neo Geo Land was, right? So. 
Just be like, ha- you know what would be the best, dude? It's like you bring it back there and then it starts glowing and you're like, oh my God. And like you have to like get into the fence, crawl over and like break down and you go into the room. And just get like some isekai adventure. Yeah, exactly, yeah. dude. That would be amazing. <laughs> I I I almost I wish that, that would actually yeah, happen. And it was transported to another world. I really, really kind of wish that that would actually happen. Like you just go there and all of a sudden you're in KOF world and you're like, what is happening? And you're like, this is so cool. Then Verse starts destroying everything. You're like, I want to go home. <laughs> I just feel like, I mean, I asked for this, you know? <laughs> 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 this is my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, honestly, what, Kingdom of Fighters 2003, I think, is the only KOF that didn't result in mass destruction for no reason at the end. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> who was running that one? To, which one? It was, was uh, Adelheid and Rose, who had it on their ship, and they just landed safely and took the competitors home. <laughs> and then uh, the alternate path is you fight Mukai, where you just kind of beat him and he walks away and then you have a conversation and ash takes chizuru's mirror and that's the end of that nothing crazy <laughs> like i almost <laughs> feel like at the end of that everyone's probably standing around like this doesn't feel like we're done yet <laughs> where where's the cata- where's the cataclysmic uh, event i mean me and my friends always had the running gag of just like you know we get that alternate universe play and we go and we run a kof and then the tournament is over, and everyone won, and everyone's having a great time. And we're just like, thanks, guys, that was awesome. And they're just looking around, waiting for something right. to happen. <laughs> I waiting mean, for me to be like, it was me the whole time, take off my giant cape or something. Like, no, no, we just wanted to have a KOF. And then we got Antonov, who basically tried to do just that. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, what I want to do now is now I just want to write, like, the fan fiction, like, of Verse coming back and bringing everybody to life. But it's like the snap. It brought back all the, like, the civilians who died in all those cataclysms, and they're back now, and they're like, what happened? (laughs) I'm telling you, you have to read Dan Slott's run on She-Hulk. Oh. (laughs) Because, like, before the snap or anything like that, um, during that run of She-Hulk, one of my favorite cases is... Um, a woman, a woman is trying to sue her husband for like breach of their marriage, uh-huh. but then they find out he's dead and he's actually a ghost running around and they're like, can, can we actually sue a ghost? Like he's dead. Does that, does that break <laughs> his contract? Whatever. And eventually it gets to the point where She-Hulk has to talk about it and she's like, look, why can't we sue him? Because he's dead. I've died. We live in the Marvel <laughs> Comics universe. I've died twice. You, you, you've died before, right? And the judge is like, "Yeah." <laughs> and he's like, "You know what? Raise your hand if you've never died before." And the whole court has their hands down. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Oh my god. They actually have to use that as a defense of like, "Yeah, no, he he technically could be sued right now." Because this is Marvel Comics. Everyone's died before. <laughs> That's hilarious. Making fun of the fact that everybody dies and comes back in Marvel Comics. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of on the same thing of, like, you know, snapping and verse and all that. <laughs> There's nothing in the rules that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, Dan Slott's run on She-Hulk, though, is just fucking top-notch. He was the one that was in the in the show, right? As the truck driver, Or at least he right? was referenced, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah, that's right. He was referenced, yeah. Yeah. Because um, the show is based on his work, mostly. Right. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, that's the exactly. most... That's basically what people consider, like, She-Hulk now, right? Like, that's kind of definitive. It's, like, probably the most iconic run at this mm-hmm. point. Like, I mean, the old ones are super relevant, etc. But, like, if you have to talk one specific run, it's that one. Okay. And, yeah, it's when I was like, oh, God, she's Harvey Birdman for Marvel. This is amazing. (laughs) Oh, man. Did you ever play the Harvey Birdman game on the Wii? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was done by Capcom, so it had all these random Capcom cameos in there. Yeah, I mean, technically, that's the only Ace Attorney game I've ever played. Yeah, uh they basically (laughs) made their own Ace Attorney game. And, uh, like, Guile was there with his hair on fire and stuff. 
Uh, yeah, it was really great having like just that the, the clashing of two worlds of Ace Attorney humor and Adult Swim humor. Right. Two well, thousands Adult Swim, which is a very different creature yeah, from that's now. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Like, to this day, I still love C Lab. <laughs> Uh, well, you've never heard of this Harvey Birdman game, Lurker Spy? <laughs> I can't even remember where I, I... I remember now, like, there was one point in time I was doing something with Capcom, and this was before, obviously, like, you know, Capcom Pro Tour and all that stuff. And so, like, they were like, hey, thanks for doing some stuff for us, James. Here's a bunch of free games. And I th think they sent me Harvey Birdman on the Wii as well. I think I got, like, four Wii games that were... Dude, I had to go on a holy quest to find, like, a beat-up used copy at a GameStop. <laughs> that game is so hard to find now. Look, I wonder how much it's worth, dude. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's like, 60 or 80 now. Okay, okay. Because I have one. I have it, so I have that. God, there was the other one that was like Captain something or other, like this little pirate, little chibi pirate. Zach and Wiki. Zach and Wiki, yes, thank you. Wow, look at that you. Awesome. Look, I've awesome. heard I heard that game is amazing. And like I said, I never actually played it, so but I've heard that game is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe you knew exactly what I was talking about when I said Captain something or other, because I wasn't even close. <laughs> There were only so many good Wii games, James. That's true, and this one was specifically by Capcom, so kind of narrowed it down. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Dude, maybe we should do, like, a, a Harvey Birdman stream someday. That would be pretty dude, funny. That would be hilarious, dude. I'm, I'm so down to do that, dude. We should just do a stream where we play, like, random-ass old games for no reason, dude. I think that would be funny hilarious yeah i mean i still have to drag you through a few games and you have to drag me through a few games yeah, so we're true, overdue true. <laughs> like, <laughs> like i'm going to drag you through metroid other m one of these days kicking and screaming <laughs> oh god <laughs> the thing is, is again i think you're an optimist enough that you're gonna look at what it should have been and forgive right. it slightly mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to do that Maybe we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm I'm planning on just doing the entire Metroid franchise, right? One of these days, because, um, yeah, I, I played through all the 2D Metroids a couple of years ago, and I feel like I just need to stream it this time and then actually redo the primes. Right. Well, I mean, the cool thing about it is now you have Prime Remastered and Fusion is on the Switch now. Now you have to actually uh, subscribe to that service to get access to it. I think. which I'm never going to do. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, look, I'm not paying extra for a lot of those extra services, especially when um, they're they don't work well enough to warrant the pay oh, pay right. price tag. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the only way that I would pay for those extra services is if the 64 included 64 DD titles. And it doesn't. Right. Yeah. It's true. It's true. I mean, I haven't done it yet either because I just don't have any reason to. But I mean, getting access to some stuff would be cool. But you know, yeah. it's like I, I. <laughs> but it's also like you own the originals. Yeah, basically. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, mean the... there are plenty, there are plenty of games like I'll stream even an emulated version, but I will have the physical copy next to me if I need to prove it. It's just because it fucking runs better. And it's less cumbersome than trying to hook up five different devices in a daisy chain. Yeah. Also, I forget if, if anybody in the chat even knows this, but all that Mario Kart DLC can actually just be bought as DLC, right? Not as part of that service. Cause yeah. If you um, the same thing happened with Animal Crossing, where if you paid for the extra service, you got the DLC for free. Uh -huh. But you could just buy the DLC and tell the service to right. fuck itself. Right. And if the service goes away, you lose all that stuff in the Animal Crossing and probably the Mario Kart stuff, right? So I for me, so. for me, there's just no reason to subscribe to the service to get that stuff because I'd rather just have it. You know what I mean? As the way that my brain works, dude. Like, I, uh -huh. I wouldn't want to have it tied to that I kind of I access. still, I still cannot believe that I have friends who have yelled at me for buying a physical game. Wait, what? <laughs> There's... Okay, look, I know, I've definitely ran into, like, similar stories, but nobody's ever gotten mad at me for buying the... They're like, what the fuck? Why? Just get the digital one and you can play it right now. And I'm like, no, I want the physical one because they can't take that from me. Right. 
and that's how, I mean, I've had people yell at me for buying CDs for sure for that. But their reason wasn't that I could get it on, like buy it digitally. Their reason was I should just be able to get it for free <laughs> if I just knew the right places to go. And I was like, I want to support the artists that I enjoy and I love yeah. listening to. Yeah, I mean, if you, here's the thing. Is it if you're not voting with your dollar, someone else is. Mm -hmm, exactly. And like, uh, you may not like how that election goes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, like, Lights is, like, one of my favorite artists. Uh, they might be giants, you know, these guys. Like, I'm going to give them money. <laughs> I want to support these artists because I love these artists. Please. I mean, case in point, I've been really enjoying the uh, the memes on Twitter of, like, 8 blank to get to know me. And some of them oh. have been just, you know, musical artists. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's have these conversations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could not believe how excited a few people got after some of my choices. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're all right. Nice, nice. <laughs> but yeah, like, talk about it. You know, spread the word of things you like. I mean, case in point, I mean, this, there's a reason why. I, I can't point at this logo right now, but you can. There's a reason this show exists. Thank you, yes. <laughs> because of all the cool physical stuff that we can buy, right? Well, no, I mean, because we want to actually be able to talk and share things that we like and just have the positivity of oh, cool shit. Right, right, yeah. You know? Oh. I, you know, everyone can sit here and be like, this game sucks, this is suck. But why? When you could be like, I like this thing. Hey, you like this thing, let's talk about that thing. Yeah! I mean, what GF Trexler actually says in the chat, I used to be all about physical until I left 50 plus DS games at a doctor's office and someone ran off with them. I, I totally get that. I totally yeah. get that. However, however... Video games should be, especially the way video games are nowadays, like half the time you buy a game and the game's not even on the disc, right? It's just you put it in the machine so it knows to download it anyway or something stupid like that. Sometimes. Or or the or the launch version is incomplete because going gold and making a deadline was more important than having a complete product. Right. But I mean, the, the way they should have done it is like how a lot of the DVDs and Blu-rays are, you know, you buy it and you just get the digital version for free. You know what I mean? Like if you buy the physical copy, you should gain access to the digital version for free. So you have access to both. And so that's the problem kind of is the problem with that is that video games are much more like really anal retentive about the number of copies sold and played and whatever. Like, here's the thing. Okay, like let's let's put this into a very direct correlation here. If I buy a DVD, my whole family can watch that movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I buy a video game, odds are only one of us can enjoy it at the same time. Yep. I mean <laughs> and so if you buy a game and get a digital copy free, odds are I'm going to give that digital copy to someone else. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. that actually is going to fuck that whole metric up. That's true. That's because it's true. a method of enjoyment. Movies you can just sit and watch. Shit, you can sit and turn your brain off and not watch. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Games you have to interact with. That changes the dynamic completely. Yeah, that's actually a good point, because then if they gave away that digital copy for free, then it's just like everybody is buying two copies and giving one away, you know? Yeah. Now, my, my point, I, I would say, though, conversely, is that um, if your patent runs out on hardware, then you shouldn't be allowed to sue for piracy on that platform anymore. Yes, a hundred percent. hundred percent. If you're not I think, supporting I think, that... I think NES games should totally be, like, fair game. Because they don't have the fucking patent on the NES anymore. You can make a fake NES nowadays. F just fine. I mean, that's what everybody does, right? You go to those mm -hmm. things, you buy those you buy those little things that play all NES games, all SNES exactly. games, etc. Et so I think that that's kind of like, that's where you should also draw the line on, are you allowed to sue for piracy of NES games? I don't think you should, because who else is backing them up? You sure as fuck aren't. <laughs> and the worst part about it is Nintendo's like, what are you talking about? We're actually still selling them on these services and on our little mini NESs. Yeah, the mini NES, which you use an emulator <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, which, by the way, you know, most of the time they have NES games available. It's like the top 50 games ever on the console, and that's it. Yeah. There are uh -huh. so many games from my childhood I can't legally play 
without just having the cartridge laying around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You didn't provide that service. It's always the hardest. Ah, oh God, it's the most frustrating thing about video games, honestly. And we've definitely had long conversations about video game preservation and stuff, which is why mm-hmm. the Mister is so cool and the FPGAs and all that stuff like that is kind of the future of it. But um, man, it is it is such a pain in the ass to to preserve well, and, video games. Well, and I mean, also it's worth noting, like most of the time, and I think there's been a study on this, that most of the time, the biggest reason for piracy is that it's not available. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. You know, Game of Thrones was the most pirated television show of all time because they weren't releasing it on DVD. Yeah. Um, oh. Like, most of the, like, uh, like, I'd say probably half the music I listen to that's not just video game music is international. You can't buy the CDs in America. (laughs) You just can't. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times, too, and and the other thing, too, is that the people who pirate stuff a lot of the times weren't going to buy it anyway, which is why they're pirating it, (laughs) you know? And, And sometimes, like for me, I have pirated stuff, and I was like, oh, my God, I love this, so I went and bought it. (laughs) <laughs> to support it it's really it's really where your moral barometer is to begin with right yeah uh-huh. like yeah I'll, i will download things like i definitely like in high school and like that era i definitely would pirate things as like my demo disc yeah if i didn't if i didn't like it i deleted it and it was gone and if i liked it i went and bought it mm-hmm. yeah i still remember one of the things that i pirated was uh picross ds on the on the nintendo ds and after I played through that thing, provided like hundreds of hours of gameplay because there are like a because billion puzzles. Yeah, it's Picross and it's got a bazillion puzzles in it. And after I finished the whole game, I finished the game and I bought it <laughs> because I was like, you gave me that much entertainment and I had so much fun. I am going to buy this game because it was worth my time for that. So, yeah, I definitely had a few uh, games on my PSP that I pirated. And I down and I got them all loaded in there. I played it for ten minutes, and I deleted every file that ever had anything to do with it because I was so glad I didn't pay for that piece of shit. <laughs> right? Yeah, that definitely happens too. Yeah, like PSP had some fucking stinkers, like the NES. Like mm. they, the game, they try to trick you into playing it because they're they're sure that they'll hook somebody. And I've never been more thankful for piracy than or I was. the box for- is like <laughs> fake enough that, you know, they're counting on the uneducated grandmas to buy the games, basically, right? Oh, dude, Me- or like bootleg DVDs. Those are yeah, the best. Yeah, uh, Mega Man, you know, it's going to be like some Mega Man game, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like the, all those... Ah! Uh, Remember, remember when you gave for your Nintendo PlayStation? <laughs> remember, there was all those, uh, always the fake, the fake, uh, uh, Disney films that would always come out, you know, back in the day in the puffy boxes. Like, it would be Aladdin, and then there'd be the movie that was called, like, The Genie Lamp or whatever, like that. And it had, like, it was, like, produced. God, did, mm-hmm. you, did you ever see that Rescue Rangers movie? <laughs> No, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, one of these, I mean, there's a, there's a whole joke about that in there, and it's it's yeah. oh, kind of yeah. glorious. It's kind of glorious. Dude, Gundam Jehudi with the 100 games in one with Super Mario 7. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Dude, actually, that's one of my favorite reasons to watch GDQ is the awful block, and they're playing, like, the bootleg Korean Pokemon platformer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if you go into Rescue Rangers movie, you know, hoping to get some Rescue Rangers nostalgia, don't bother. Like, that's not what you're getting out of that movie. Clearly, you watch it and you're like, okay. But if you're looking for the spiritual sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that's what you get it for. That's what you watch it for. Because that's essentially what it is. So, as a movie with as many just amazing jokes that just hit, like, it's worth watching it. And separating it from the actual Rescue Rangers cartoon. But if you are there to embrace the jokes about animation and stuff like that, like it's it's great. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that's definitely one that I need to get around to. 
Well, it's on Disney Plus, so whenever you move back in, we'll just sit down and watch a bunch the, of stuff. The, so the process is rolling. Yeah, so. we'll, you, we'll watch that. We'll watch some Wakanda Forever for you. <laughs> We've got stuff to go. <laughs> um, Virtual Fighter Three versus Tekken Two. Is that, or did it actually say Taken Two? Because oh, I'm sure it was actually Taken. <laughs> Uh, I mean, God, remember when some company made a bootleg Street Fighter 2 on NES as well, you know? And it, like, was bad, but it actually, like, weirdly was not as awful as you would expect it to be. I mean, again, there are still games that are legitimate. I still can't believe that they made work. I will never be able to get over Real Bout Special on Game Boy. <laughs> Really? Was it chibi? Was it chibi style? Chibi it's style? It's a little chibi, but they're even smaller than that. Like the entirety of a character is like fifteen pixels. Oh my god! But it fucking works, and that's the weirdest part. In black and white Game Boy. Oh my god! It's actually good. Like it's it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I hell, I actually had Battle Arena Toshinden on Game Boy. <laughs> Jeez. Also, yes, it's official. Takara did a lot of weird ports. Oh my god. Holy yeah. crap. I mean, oh, by the way, actually, have you seen um talking about like bootlegs and hacking in the independent communities? Someone there's a team right now working on putting a uh, real bout special onto the Genesis. And it looks phenomenal. I would I'm surprised that it didn't there wasn't a version of it that already existed. They never made it past Fatal Fury special. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, they're making real bout special for the Genesis, and they're working on actually porting it also to run on Sega CD so they can have the original audio because they're <laughs> running out of physical space. <laughs> now, now, it's so sick. It's always weird because you know, obviously, when people try to make games that would, you know, that like a new NES game, and you just they're actually trying to make it within the specifications of the hardware too, right? Because mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. Mega Man Hopefully. Nine. Like, even though it's, like, retro, it couldn't actually run on an NES, right? Not even close for many reasons. Yeah. But, no, um, um, yeah, I mean, the hard thing is, like, like the Genesis actual, like, physical space for a game is incredibly tiny. Right. So it's really hard. Like, there's another project I'm watching on and off right now I really like. I think it's just a one-man team, but he's putting Symphony of the Night on the Genesis. <laughs> what? And again, people do this mostly just because they want to try, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just like, can I do it? Let's just see. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, like the independent Genesis community is getting kind of wild. Yeah, no, you can definitely, you use those cards. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically, it turns the cartridge slot into an SD port. And so <laughs> then you, you, know, you can have a complete Genesis game as big as you want. Right, yeah. yeah you ever drive, okay, that's okay, it. Thank okay. you, yeah. Um, so that so real bad special on Genesis runs on EverDrive because it's too mm -hmm. fucking big. Got it. Got but it. But they still managed to like chop the resolution enough to run on the Genesis. I mean, you were the one that learned Alpha Two on the Super Nintendo, right? <laughs> Loading yeah, time on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Man, there are some wild ports out there. Uh, actually, if you ever get a chance, um, I think it's the same same guy that was doing some of the other ones uh, on YouTube. There's a guy who talks about impossible ports. Yeah. Um, and he talks yeah. about, you know, the Alpha 2 on Super Nintendo. He talks about Alpha 3 on the GBA. Oh, and, wait, like, that's right. Like, they did make yeah. one. That's right. Yeah, Alpha 3 Upper. Yeah. Or Alpha 3 Max. Is it, Whatever, yeah. Is that the one? Is that the channel, Modern and, Vintage and, Gamer? Modern Vintage Gamer might be one of the ones that's doing that. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it, he's the one that did those videos. Um, and then I'm a big fan of Coding Secrets because he actually works on like Toy Story on the Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> you showed does. me that video. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How they did all the parallax and all the fake Mode 7 graphics and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, and just crazy like first person view stuff like that shouldn't work on the console you or the, having a having 3d cutscenes for sonic 3d blast yeah. <laughs> you're all the Genesis. one you're also the one that the he was the one that you showed me the video of like the the helicopter game where they actually like rotated the map and actually had like a full rotating map on the yeah. genesis that right? one and then also uh doing stuff with sonic r on the saturn that technically wasn't possible on the saturn 
<laughs> Fuck uh, it. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing is like, it's like you said, at this point, I mean, I still have all those old consoles. I still have that old TV down there just so I can play them on a non laggy TV if I ever really wanted to. So I literally just have this museum just sitting in my room collecting dust, which sucks. But that's the thing is like, if I actually got one of these like drive things that I could just play the actual cartridges and stuff like on these machines and stuff, I could put a lot of that stuff away and, you know, make sure they're clear or put them in a nice glass case so that they don't collect dust anymore. I could probably, I mean, I don't know if I'd want to sell that TV because just for who I am, having an old, really high quality CRT just for preservation purposes is probably a good idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also one of those things, like if you ever get to the point where you have to, uh, or you want to like run an actual arcade cabinet, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. TV for that, like, yeah, I want a fucking JAMA to HDMI, sure, but I also kind of would just want to have, like, an old fucking tube TV yeah, to run the arcade cabinet. And I could just hook all that stuff onto it. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely would want to keep that, too. Because that thing is, the TV that I have is, like, almost like a 33-inch monitor cabinet from the old days, you know? Mm -hmm. I could probably just build a fake panel in front of it, you know, and, and just kind of treat it like one, honestly. Yeah, and I mean, again, case in point, the thing, to, the thing next to you, because you need to play Nestris on it. Yeah, well, I mean, I have this thing over here. Right? That's what I was talking thing, about. Yeah, yeah, this thing here. But yeah. I still have you a need different... you need a CRT. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I still have that other one downstairs, the big one that mm -hmm. almost killed oh, the, the one that almost killed the people who moved it downstairs. So you know. <clears throat> yeah. Well, by the way, which one is the one that kills uh, my ears? Is that that one? It's this one. This one right yeah. here, yeah. There was one time it was on and I didn't even know because it was the screen was just black. Maybe the cat hit it or something like that. But there was somebody on my stream was just like, you know, I can't watch your show. There's this noise, and I was like, what? Oh, what could it possibly be? And then I was like, wait a second. And I went over and I found the TV was on, and I was like, oh no, shoot, yeah. I'm killing it everybody's just, ears. It definitely hits that frequency that's on the fringe of human hearing kind of thing, where some people don't hear it, but it is the most excruciating thing. Because, yeah. like, I've been there in person. Yeah. I've been there in person for it, chat. Oh my god, I hate it. It's like I crippling. The first time I tried to use it so that I could stream something like in the stu when I had the studio in your room, like I turned it on and everyone was like, I can't like because I had it in the background. And since I had that super gun, I just had ST running in the background, mm -hmm. like as a cool background. And people were like, what's that noise? What's that noise? And I was like, you've yeah. got to be kidding me. So I, I feel yeah, like there's got to be it comes through differently in the. Uh on a microphone compared to in person. And that's the other too. thing too, is I feel like there's gotta be like software filters that could like kill out that range. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I need to get the, I, I need to figure out which ones are the best of those retro things that lets you actually play like the old NES cartridges or maybe even just flash drive it on there just so I can play whatever I want, you know? <sighs> yeah. But that was that was fun sidebar. Um, but I think I'm out of stuff. I gotta get some some stuff done. Okay. Um, Misters are great options if you can get them. Yeah, yeah. I should talk to, to. There was a couple of people who have been like, "Hey, James, are you looking for a Mister kind of thing?" So you know, I'll have to talk to some of these people and see if that's still an option on the table. So I just, I actually literally just don't know how Misters work. You know, are they like mini PCs or like, do they just have SD cards that they read from? I, like, I literally have no idea how Misters work. Well, so I, I mean, luckily you have you have friends you can talk to and get yeah. the full break. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we definitely know someone who has the mister in their house in a cabinet. So, yeah. <laughs> so it can't be hard to figure out. So, okay. But uh, it sounds like you have stuff that you need to take care of. So, yeah, I think okay. uh, I think we're pretty much good for the moment. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I have one more thing. Okay. And I retweeted it. <sighs> one man with a dream. 
is still continuing work on Hyper Neo Geo 64 emulation. Are you serious? He has Bariki almost to a good playable point. It's not perfect yet, but he has made so much progress. Wow. See, that's what it always takes is that one guy. The one, one guy, guy who's who knows dedicated what to do enough. and yeah, wants it done. Uh-huh. Oh, so, man. so, uh, oh, not just Sam Show 64, both Sam Show 64s. Um,. You know, it'll be good to let people see Wild Ambition not on the PlayStation. That'll be fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we 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 might actually get fully emulated Bariki one some point soon. I'm trying to find your tweet about that. Uh, uh, it was I think it was like almost a week ago. Oh, okay, it was a while ago. Okay. Well, um, then. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I just saw another one of your retweets. SNK make costumes for KOF fifteen. Okay, anyways. Costumes. <laughs> Costumes, costumes. Which actually is uh, one one other tiny thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've talked before about people who are keeping uh, an eye on the Steam DB and watching it like a fucking hawk. Oh, right. Uh, I don't remember if it was if it was Ati Rio or if it was Gato Ray. One of them pointed it out and saw that the next DLC has basically two paid DLC slots on top of each other, which would mean you know okay, and it's Kim, sure, mm-hmm. but. Seems too soon to be Sylvie. Seems like it may or may not be the boss DLC, which the boss DLC should be free anyway. Mm-hmm. So my guess is, is that Kim's going to have a classic costume. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of the characters do, right? So, But it would be, but it would be purchasable as, as secondary DLC or something? It's hard mm-hmm. to tell. Mm-hmm. But uh, that might be a thing, which means that we get Kim's pants and Kim's pants. <laughs> You can um, never have too much yeah. of Kim's pants, so that's yeah. that's the rule. Um, Kim has not been shown yet. Um, it's going to be playable at Evo Japan, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, for one day, apparently, he will be playable at SNK's booth at Evo Japan. That's so weird. And yes, okay, I actually got distracted, but I do have something else to say. Thank you. So, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend is WonderCon in Los Angeles. And um, I've been wanting to go to WonderCon this year because someone I really want to meet is going to be there. Uh-huh. But um, our friends of Spec Fiction are going to be there. And uh, current plan is that they will have the new Orochi Shermi statue out and on display if you want to see it in person. If you are a Californian and you happen to head over to WonderCon, make sure to swing by the Spec Fiction booth, which is going to be booth 1055. Uh, we are planning on being there at least for one day. There might be a costume involved. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but they're going to have some statues on display, and you can check them out and say hi. Tell them we sent you, etc. Um, so yeah, so WonderCon next weekend. And then just because I'm a huge nerd, the other reason we're going is because the... Uh, the creators and fo- and voice of Freakazoid are going to be there. Oh, Paul, and, um, Paul Rugg, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rugg is going to be there as well as um, his partner in crime because they were co-founders of the right. series. But Paul was the voice of Freakazoid. Yeah. And so I absolutely must go. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I've talked about it before, but did you ever see that video of uh, there's uh, there's this old white dude with his like small dogs, like a Pomeranian or a Chihuahua mix or something. And he's like, having a dog is great for your emotions. You know, having a dog and petting your dog is the nicest thing you can really do for your mental health. And the dogs are just going fucking ape shit trying to bite his hand. I think so. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's him. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> which how makes did, it like super on brand right how did he get the? i mean did he, was the, 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 I, that's I, his dog. That, that was his dog rest in peace oh okay i'm that just wondering like, like if he trained that dog to like you know to just His little dogs just sometimes have weird tics yeah and... it's true it's true is that a, um is that a marstorius emote holy crap it is a marstorius emote dash no chris that's our story is from Fighters History, dude. Like I just saw that and I was like, wait a second. Oh man. Um also I I don't think SMK is going to give much of a shit about PAX, really. Uh-huh. I mean I could be wrong, but that would be news to me. But James is gonna be at PAX, right? 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> I will be there. I will be at PAX East. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't expect any announcements from SNK until just Evo Japan at this point, because that's what two weeks away now. Yeah, basic. I mean, PAX East is basically right before is the weekend before Evo Japan. So basically I'll, I mean, I'll be, I'm not going to Japan, but I'll be doing something for Evo Japan here. So now if anybody is going to Evo Japan and wants to bring us back stuff that I'm going to miss, cause I'm missing Evo Japan. That'd be great. Same, same, same. But like I said, if you ever get anything from the S and K booth for me, you're going to have to get two of them because whatever you give me, I'm giving to Mike first. <laughs> and then I will keep any secondary copies of any S and K things there are. But if you can get me any sort of like street fighter, cool things, you know, I'm, I'm in guilty gear. I'm in. So, oh man. But, uh, but yeah. And then we'll, we'll be in Japan after that to visit Osaka and Tokyo and definitely try to take as many cool photos and, historical things i mean the thing is actually timing wise we might be some of the first people to provide coverage for the new office is oh. snk is moving oh interesting okay snk okay. is currently moving from uh Isaka to shin osaka Dang. which puts them much closer to the shinkansen station that's actually and that's gonna be convenient for business i mean they're they're like practically associated with Osaka, right? I mean, like, everything about, like... like Dude, That's I, why everyone's Twitter has just been saying goodbye, Osaka, quoting uh, the name of the song. Because, like, yeah. honestly, that's the only... Like, uh, SNK is why I know about Osaka, right? I mean... <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so, you know, it is it is what it is. So that means there's just one more empty building I have to visit instead of a building that's <laughs> thriving. But, uh... uh Still, it was really heartbreaking watching someone else's video, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is where this was, but it's a parking lot now. I'm like, oh. Like, it was just leveled and turned into a parking yeah, lot. But, like, the old Neo Geo Land is still a building there, so at yeah. least I can see I mean, it still it. has the SNK logo on the roof, right? So, the Neo that's, Geo No, that's logo. the low land in Osaka, the arcade. Oh! Yeah, the Neo Geo yeah, World is the theme park. Oh, land gotcha, is the gotcha. arcade. Okay, okay, got it, yeah. got it, got it. Okay. So, okay. Um, but those are all gone too. But at least the building is still there. Yeah. But yeah, though, I can take even the Ferris wheel building. doesn't work anymore, right? As we discovered. So yeah. So, but I'm still going to the old Neo Geo world just yeah. to bring the keychain back to its home. <laughs> but um, it's like I said, so, yeah, man, I, I hope it glows. I hope it glows when you bring it back, dude. So, dude, I'm gonna bring like a fucking uh, a laser pointer just to shine into it and can, and freak you out. Because <laughs> <laughs> what's happened is whoever owns it is like. Only the true, most dedicated person will purchase this from Yahoo Auctions Japan. And if whoever decides to purchase this, I know will be the chosen one to discover the secrets at, that are still Only hidden. the biggest of nerds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone buys this, they will probably bring it back. And then they will discover, be able to the discover the, the treasure hidden within the depths of what remains of Neo Geo World. Uh, Again, I still love the fact that the seller was like, I don't even know what this is. Is. see like <laughs> that's the that's the that's the play that's the play right no one would buy it except for someone who truly knows or would do the research see that's how he got you the biggest of nerds exactly oh <laughs> uh, man uh, but yeah i can't wait to just bring that out there and then just be like yep i brought it <laughs> Ow. Uh, see if I can have enough time to build like some sort of Eta bag with other dumb stuff. I don't know. But mm -hmm. um, for now, it's going to be getting the rest of crap together. and. What should I close out it. on? Goodbye, Asaka. <laughs> uh, whose theme is that, technically? Kyo. It's Kyo's. Kyo. Uh, which version? Because there's a bunch of them. There's the 15 version. I have the 2000 I would do, version. I'd do the 2000. 2000 arranged, even. 2000 arranged. Because I think we've done this one before, but I mean. Probably. It yeah. Because it definitely has a little red bar at the bottom of it. Oh, maybe a Yamazaki theme? Or Terry theme? could do a Yamazaki. Uh, it, would, it would be a Yamazaki in honor of the, of the statue, really, would be the more necessary yeah. one. Um. 
I mean, the thing is, I don't even, like, love most of his themes, but, yeah, it's, uh, what is it, C-69? C-52? One of those fucking things. C Yamazaki theme 97, whatever. Yamazaki theme C-69. Actually, just do his Fatal Fury 3 when it piss people off. <laughs> Why? Because it's gonna sound the worst, and it's the first version of it. Well, it's there's an arranged version. There's an arranged version of the Fatal Fury three one. Oh, here's the real one: Fatal Fury three and real about Fatal Fury. So go for this one. Yeah, whichever. All right, let's do it. Here we go. It's gonna be an ad first, of course. Yep. All right. Ah, uh, I get it. What's up? It's 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 kind of a pun. Oh, got it. I see it. I see it. This is the one. All right. I, I don't know. I can't hear it on this side. Oh, oh hang on. I can fix that for you. Can you hear it now? No, still no. Oh wait. There we go. Wow, I forgot what this sounded like. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you uh, next, oh, not next week on Synchronize, unless we try to do one on another day, but we'll figure it out. See you guys soon. Take care.